And Southeast Asian cities are sinking more quickly than anywhere else in the world, according to a group of international scientists. The assessment comes after a six-year study of 48 cities, which found that uh, they were sinking at a median rate of 16 millimetres a year. The current global mean sea level rise of 3.7 millimetres a year. And for a better figure. understanding, mm -hmm. let's speak to the lead investigator, Professor Benjamin Horton. He is director of the Earth Observatory of Singapore at NTU. Now, Prof, first things first, give us a sense of, of the gravity of the situation and how, how big a deal this study is. Well, it's a landmark publication because for the first time, we're able to accurately measure the rate at which 50 of the largest cities on the planet are either sinking, causing a hot spot to sea level, or uplifting, minimizing the impact of sea level rise. Mm. So, what is interesting is that this, this, this project that you've undertaken quite massively with multiple countries, it, it, it gives a, a missing piece, isn't it, to some of the information we didn't have before? Because as you said, um, when it comes to rising sea levels and sinking cities, it's a three-sided coin and we didn't have information for all those sites before. Well, yes. Yeah, so the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change that released its report in 2021 concentrated on what's happening in the oceans. So if you increase ocean temperatures, the oceans occupy greater volume and sea level goes up. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change also concentrated on what's happening to the ice on our planet. So if you increase atmosphere and ocean temperatures, land-based ice in glaciers, ice caps, but particularly the ice sheets of Greenland and Antarctica melt and sea level goes up. Yep. But there are only two sides of the triangle. The third side is understanding what the land does. So now armed with this report, published by the Earth Observatory of Singapore, as you said, in collaboration with other leading universities, now provides the complete picture on what, what areas of the world are most at risk from sea level rise. Give us a sense of what the findings mean for Singapore, though. Well, for Singapore, it just supports what we really knew, that Singapore is stable. It's only subsiding at an average rate of somewhere around one millimetre per year. Mm. But this study also provides details at an unprecedented level, so we can actually identify in Singapore where there are hot spots of land sinking, and they're commonly in areas where we've had land reclamation. Mm. And I just want to shine the spotlight a little bit on the cities that have been identified as, as danger zones. We've got uh, Jakarta, we've got Chittagong in Bangladesh, we've got Ho Chi Minh and Tianjin as well. Mm -hmm. um, any surprises there? And second part to the question, do these places have the political will to sort of reverse things, if possible even? Well, the data doesn't really surprise the scientists at the Earth Observatory of Singapore because we understand the processes that would contribute to an area sinking. What did surprise us is the accuracy of the data. We can provide rates at millimetres per year. We can go down to the community or the suburb level and that's very powerful for governmental planners or policy makers because now they know which cities are most at risk but also know which regions of a city is at risk and therefore governmental or taxpayers' dollars can be placed smarter. The adaptations can be more efficient. Regarding your second question, what can you do about it? Well, regarding climate change, the warming of the oceans or the melting of the ice sheets, well, the climate community knows what to do. We must keep to the Paris Agreement. Keep our temperatures below 2 degrees C so we don't pass a tipping point, for example, with the Antarctic ice sheet. With the land sinking, there are some processes that we can't control. They're related to tectonic movements associated with earthquakes. But then there are processes, because of this paper, that we can more readily understand. Many of the cities that have high rates of subsidence are because of groundwater withdrawal. Yeah. Emerging cities get their drinking water, water for commercial or residential activity, from aquifers beneath the city. You remove the water, the aquifer collapses, the land sinks. Mm. So armed with that information, we can now have more efficient uses of water and potentially recharge the aquifers to stop the sinking. How important is it that you are working with uh, 
other countries, uh, California, New Mexico, Zurich, as well as Singapore, on this study? And how important was it that the, the, the resolution of the images that you used were extremely accurate? Well, sea level rise is a global problem. To provide the data sets and the solutions, you need cooperative agreements across the globe. So that's why we partnered the Earth Observatory at Nanyang Technological University with the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California. But data sets aren't alone. You need smart, innovative people to drive the science. And we were very fortunate to have one. The lead author of this study is a young female Singaporean, Cheryl Tay, who's doing her PhD at the Asian School of the Environment at Nanyang Technological University. So now Singapore has one of the leading lights, the experts in this, that now can try and keep our cities better prepared for climate change. Well, you paint uh, an optimistic picture. We appreciate you coming to speak with us, uh, Professor Horton. Uh, Professor uh, Horton there is the lead investigator and director at the Earth Observatory at NTU.